left to grab. Well, welcome everyone to Thornapple Valley Church Online. We are so glad that you are with us in these uh, remarkably uncertain days. And I'm just so thankful that in the midst of all the uncertainty that we deal with, there are some things for Christ followers that we are certain of, and that is that God loves us. Amen? And you can say amen in your house. You can say amen wherever you're at, that God cares about us, that he's with us, and it's going to be okay. Now, I know this has been a crazy season for so many of us. And the truth is, it's like, it's hard to even know what to think. Words don't go together like social distancing. They, how do you put those together? How is it possible to be social and distant? But there we are. Nonetheless, even in these times, we've been looking as a church for ways that we can be an encouragement and a support to you. And we've got a number of ideas, but let me just tell you about one. One thing that we would love to do, if you would like, we will send you one verse, just a verse from the Bible a day, just as a text, we will send you one verse to remind you of God's love and his comfort for you. I think sometimes we just need to be reminded in our day, God's still God. He's still on the throne. He still loves me. It is okay. And if you would like, you can text TVC Life to that number, you see it on the screen, 77948, and you will be a part of that, and we will send one a day, only for as long as this season where we can't physically meet together as the church. We'll send that to you, and at the end of that, then we'll end those texts. If you'd like those, just text that at the bottom of the screen. And we'll also keep you updated via email if you would like that. Now, if you're not on our email list, you can email us at tvc at tvcweb.com and let us know you want to be on the list and we'll make sure that you're on it. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to spend time together in worship. So would you join me all in prayer now? God, we're so grateful for your love and your grace and your goodness and your mercy. And that even in struggles, even in times of uncertainty, what we know is that it's not just about me. It's not about what I can do. 
It's about me and God. Me and you. And so we remind ourselves that with you there is always hope and that you are with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that awesome? That was totally awesome with the banjo and Don doing a fantastic job. Just makes you want to get up out of your seat and say, yee I love country. You don't have to do that at home if you don't want to, especially if it's going to get you funny looks. But that song is just a simple reminder about how no matter how bad it looks outside, no matter how crazy or topsy-turvy the world is getting, you're not in this alone. You don't have to do it alone. You were never meant to do it alone. God is with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. And if you let him, he can and will do great things in your life and the lives of those around you if you'll let him. Even during these times, especially during these times. In fact, we're going to sing about that right now. We invite you to join in with us. It doesn't matter who's listening. It's between you and God about the great things he can do in your life. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for being great all the time. And right now we lean into you and we ask that you would do great things. We think we're incapable of them, but you are not. So do the great things that we know you can do. We give you permission. In your name, Jesus, amen. All right, TBC Online, I want you to sing this with me. Savior is done. 
the grave, who saved us, broke every chain, let's sing it tonight, and oh hero of heaven, you conquered the grave, you free every captain, you break every chain, oh God, you have done great things, we dance in your freedom, awake and alive, oh Jesus, I sing your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. Well, hello to everyone watching online. My name is Shauna, and I'm one of the worship leaders here at TVC, and um, we're just so happy to have you join us online during these kind of crazy and interesting times that we're having, and I know some of us are finding ourselves now to be busier than ever. And some of us suddenly have a lot of extra time on our hands. And us parents and caretakers, especially of the younger kiddos, um, somebody send help for us. <laughs> Just kidding, kind of. Um, <laughs> we suddenly have a lot of extra time with our kiddos. Um, but I know whatever the situation is for you, life probably feels um, pretty disjointed and a little bit chaotic right now. But I believe that there are good things that can come from it. And... Um, not to underestimate the circumstances at all, but we do have hope. And we have hope because we have Jesus and we know that ultimately he is in control. 
And so the truth is, we can never be sure what tomorrow will bring. But in times like these, when fear and anxiety are at an all-time high, I think it's so important just to remember the truths and promises in the Bible. And um, one that's been on my mind a lot lately is found in John 14, 27. And it says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Amen. So we're going to sing a couple more songs, and it's our hope that you'll experience a connection with God through this worship time. And wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, if you're watching or listening, it's our prayer that you would take comfort in knowing that there is peace and there is rest to be found in the Lord, that he is in control. And that we have hope because we have Jesus. So I'm going to pray and then we'll sing. Lord, help us to know as things seem to be changing by the minute that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, God. Take any feelings of fear and anxiety and just replace them with your supernatural peace, God. I just pray a wave of peace right now. Lord, we're looking for you to move. Move in us, God. Move in our hearts, because we need you, Father, and we love you.
in the midst of our anxiety, Father, we need you. And we acknowledge that tonight. And we know that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You are what we build our lives on. And may we not build our lives on the fear, on the anxiety, and on the doubt, but on your firm foundation, God. On your word, on your promises. We build them on you, and you alone. You are our cornerstone, our Father, our friend. God, we worship you. May we fall to our knees and worship you tonight and give you the glory. Let's sing this together. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. Trust Holy trust in Jesus' name. We trust you. We trust you. Let's sing it again. My hope. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood, Jesus' blood, and righteousness. Yeah. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, oh Lord. Holy trust in Jesus' name. We sing this Christ alone, cornerstone, we made strong in the Savior's love and through the storm. He is the Lord, Lord of away all of our fear tonight, God, when darkness seems, yeah, when darkness seems to hide his face, oh Lord, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy care, you are, Lord, my anchor holds within the veil. Let's say it together. My anchor holds within the veil. You never move. You never move. Christ alone. Call us who we can make strong in the Savior's love. And through the storm, He is alone. in 
is righteousness alone for we stand before the throne we stand before you God it's Jesus may we build our foundation on you to build our lives on you Father, now take away all the anxiety, all the fear, in Jesus' name. Continue the miracles of healing, of restoration, God. May all those who don't know you come to know you, God. May they come to stand before your throne, washed clean by the blood of Jesus, our Savior, our Messiah, our King. God, we put our trust in you. We put our faith in you, God. And we stand and we worship you. Take away the fear. God, bring healing to our nation, to our world, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, rise to stone, our rock. To you we give, to you we surrender tonight. May we love, may we continue to love how you called us to love, even in these times, God, when it's so easy to turn the other way. May we continue to love because it's what you called us to do, because we love you, because we worship you. You first loved us, Father. May we continue to give in Jesus' name, our cornerstone. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, TVC. I'm so happy that you guys are joining us online. Uh, this is uh, in this craziness, in this weird time. It's pretty cool that we can still connect online. And so I just want to say hi. That uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Matt Van Dongen, and uh, I'm on staff here. I work with our internship program, and I work with our uh, our student program. It's called Fusion 412. So it, it's really fun. My job here is awesome, and sometimes I get the opportunity to to come and speak with you guys here, so this is, this is cool, and I'm excited that I get an opportunity to speak with you guys today. 
And uh, so we're in this series uh, based off this book called Emotional Healthy Spirituality. And so we've been in this series talking about how if we want to have a healthy relationship with God, we also have to understand our emotions and how those all connect. And so I have a message that I want to share with you today. And I actually had a hard time uh, figuring out how to start this message because I didn't want to start it the same way that a message like this always seems to be started. I've actually heard a message like I'm going to share today probably a thousand times from a thousand different preachers, and, and, it's, and it's redundant. So I was like, oh, I don't want to start the way that I would normally start this. But then I started thinking, well, if it's been said a thousand times, it probably means that it's actually really good stuff. And so, uh, and even more so, if we've heard it a thousand times, and we still need to talk about it, it means that it probably just hasn't stuck a lot with us either. So I'm excited. So here's my, my big start for you. Our lives are busy. Our lives are busy. And, and then all of us can relate to that, this idea of busyness. And I actually have spoke on this up here before. Our lead pastor, Jeff, has spoke on this, the idea that we're busy. The podcast that we listened to just last week probably said that we're busy. The commercial we just watched probably said that we're busy. Because the reality of the fact is we are busy. We are busy, always doing something, whether it's planning stuff with our families, going to work, planning vacations when the coronavirus isn't happening. But there's a lot of things that are happening, and I do acknowledge as we're talking about this idea of busyness, we are in a weird spot right now. And so maybe busyness doesn't look quite like it did before, but I don't know if you found out in this last week, I'm not really less busy. Even in the midst of some things I would normally do, Uh, not happening anymore, I still find myself busy somehow because I think that's how we're wired. We're wired for busyness. We're wired to do. And I think there are two different types of busyness that I want to talk about that are in our lives. And first is the traditional busyness that I like to call the overloaded busyness. This is the busy busy. So this is when you have so much to do, you feel like you never have enough time when you're you're taking care of the kids, you're going to work, you're, you're trying to make this happen and that happen, getting, getting groceries, changing your car uh, oil, doing all this stuff. And it's, it's always so busy that it, you actually don't feel like you have enough time to do something. There's this busyness, which I think we can all relate to. But then the second type of busyness, I believe, is... Uh, Something that maybe we don't always view as busyness, but I call it the busy, busyness of distraction, of distraction. And so this uh, includes things like Netflix, social media, watching sports, not right now, but when we can watch sports, uh, the different apps on our phones, video games, all of this type of stuff. And so this isn't the traditional busyness, but I like to call this the fake busyness. And so we, we, we say these things like, oh man, I never have enough time to do this. I never have enough time to do this. I'm too busy to get this done. But then we look at our lives, and yes, we have some of the busy, busy, overload busyness, but then we also have a lot of distractions. Uh, I don't want you guys to do this right now, but I do challenge you. If you have an iPhone, there's an app on it that actually tracks your screen time. And I'm sure there's an app you can get for Android users as well. But I actually did some study on this, and the, the, the statistics show that most people are, on average, their screen time on their phone are about four hours a day. Four hours a day. So I want, I, what I would like you guys to do sometime, maybe after this message or, or sometime this week, is go to your screen time, see how mu- much screen time you've had for the day, but then add how much time you've sat in front of the TV that day, and see how much that adds up, and it's pretty scary. <laughs> Uh, I was actually, I've done this before and and pretty appalled at how much time I am in front of my device or a TV. And so the reason that I call this fake busyness is that we will often say these things like we're so busy, but then we look at all the distraction in our life and there's so much of it. There's so much of it. And so I would say it's safe for us, for pretty much maybe all but a few of us, could say that we fall in one or both of these categories, where we are either overloaded with the amount of to-dos on our list, or we're full of distraction that makes us feel busy. And so what happens when we live in this state of busyness, which is all the time, so it's safe to say that many of us are living this way right now, 
is we often drop things in our life to make time for those things that require our attention with busyness. And really, one of the first things that I've seen in my life, and I'm sure it's the same for you, the first thing to drop is our time with God. Our, our personal, intimate, set-apart time with God drops. Because what happens, and in our American culture, we go, 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 distraction, distraction, and then we come to church on Sunday. Then it's go, 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 distraction, distraction, and we listen to a podcast on the way to work. Go, 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 distraction, distraction, we read a chapter out of a book that's a Christian book. And basically what this does is we're so busy, and then we have these just short little moments with God through the week, but what this does is it has us live off the spirituality of another person. So we're not actually in this, in this busyness, in this mindset that we have as Americans of go, 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 distraction, distraction, quick time with Jesus. It creates spirituality that's off someone else's walk. That our faith is based on someone else feeding us in a moment. And I'm not saying those things are, are, are bad because I think that it's good to listen to podcasts that improve you. It's good to read books. It's good to go to church and hear a message. But what happens is when we just make that our spiritual walk, when we make that our faith, it doesn't produce roots of faith in our life. It doesn't produce um, this relationship with Jesus that when hard things happen, we press into what we've created with Jesus. But if, if hard things happen and we haven't created that and we've been living off someone else's spirituality, then all of a sudden those podcasts, those books that church time drop all together, all together. So our busyness, if we're not rooted in quiet time, in this time spent with Jesus by ourself, God drops all together. He drops all together. And so we can't base our spirituality off someone else. We can't have our faith be built off just attending church or listening to church or to listening to a podcast, but it has to be intentional time spent with God. And so that's what I want to talk about right now. And like I said, we've heard messages like this before. We've heard this idea of spending time with God. And so I just hope that it just hits um, even deeper with us today. And so we often know this as quiet time, as quiet time. So you've growing up, you said, you know, spend this time, this quiet time with God. And I want to talk about what that looks like. And oftentimes in my life, quiet time would look like maybe in the morning when you get up, you wake up a little bit too late, you're trying to get the coffee or grab the breakfast um, that you maybe miss. And so you just get that small little moment with God in the morning. And then you have your entire day. Everything happens. And before you go to bed, you have a, a prayer time, like a small prayer time, whatever. That's your quiet time. But I want to talk about um, a little bit more than that. And I want to, uh, what it's called is keeping the daily office. And I'm going to use that a lot as I talk. The daily office. So I'm going to explain this more. The daily office is like quiet time on steroids. And so basically it's a little bit more intentionality than just having quiet time. And then actually the daily office is an ancient principle that comes from the founders of our church. And it's actually very powerful. So um, way back when the the church leaders and elders would, would create these daily offices, which basically means times set apart during the day to spend with God, to reconnect with God. So it wasn't just a morning thing, it wasn't just a nighttime thing, but daily practices of multiple times during the day, our church leaders of the beginning of our faith would create and set these times apart to reconnect with God. And another important thing about when I say daily office, it's the idea of not getting something from God, but it means to be with God. And so to set apart multiple times a day to be with God, to abide with God, to be in communion with God. And that's when it, the language of a daily office actually changes for me than saying quiet time. It really is having quiet time. But there's more to it. It's having multiple times a day being with God. And so this, this idea... Of, of daily office, this idea of spending multiple times with God a day, actually comes straight from the Bible. Um, so King David, he was the king of Israel, and uh, 
And God actually called him a man after God's own heart. And uh, in Psalm 27, 4, it says this, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. That the number one thing above all else that David, a man after God's own heart, is saying is to gaze at Jesus, to find this time. If he could do it all the time, he would. And as you really study the Bible and you see David through the Psalms, you realize that David actually sets us seven times during the day to get away with God. So it wasn't just a morning uh, prayer, it wasn't just a night prayer, but there were seven times during the day that Daniel, or that, sorry, that uh, David spent with God. And then talking about Daniel, he's also a great man in the Bible, and he set apart three different times during the day to connect with God. So it was more than just this one time during the day, it was multiple times of connecting. And of course, our Lord Jesus is the perfect example of, of what it looks like to get away and spend time with the Father. Um, actually, if you read through the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the this, this story of Jesus, you see that time and time again, Jesus' complete foundation on everything he did stemmed from this time of getting away with the Father. Every, everything, when he began, he's, he started his ministry with this time away before he made important decisions, how he dealt with troubling emotions like grief, how he dealt with the constant demands of ministry and cared for his soul, when he taught his disciples, how he prepared for major ministry events, and how he prepared for his death, and how he prepared for the cross, all had with getting away and exercising these daily office, this discipline of getting with the Father. Jesus showed us this example. It says in Luke 5, 15, Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. That he often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. That this verse is revolutionary, I think. That in, if we look at Jesus' job, like, in his life, he was busy, a guy. He was traveling from town to town. He was preaching to crowds. He was healing the sick. He was performing miracles. He was dealing with his disciples. This was his job. But it said he often withdrew to pray. And so if we look at our lives, you know, we have jobs too. We have things. We have responsibilities. We're doing all of these things just like Jesus. So how much more do we need to often withdraw and reconnect with the Father, with God? And Charles Stanley says this. We can be tired, weary, and emotionally distraught. But after spending time alone with God, we find that he injects our bodies with energy, with power, and with strength. That there's something so amazing that that David and Daniel and Jesus knew that getting away and spending this daily office time, this daily discipline uh, multiple times a day with God did something in us, infuses us with power, with energy from the Holy Spirit as we spend time with God. And I really want to just talk about the importance of it being more than just in the morning, more than just at night, but during our actual days to take this time. And so what I'm going to do is, and I I think that, that we can be in agreement that this is important, that spending time with God intentionally is important. But I think there, and it's going to look different for all of us. What might work for me might not work for you. And and maybe sometimes I have two minutes to do this in the middle of the day. Sometimes maybe I have 45 minutes. This is going to look different. But there are four things, and I encourage you guys to go read the EHS book. But there are four things that's talked about in this idea of a daily office that can be really for all of us in whatever way we connect with God. There's four things. And so I want to talk about those with yours, with you. And the first thing, the first thing when it comes to spending this time with God is stopping. Just stopping. In the midst of our busyness, in the midst of everything that's going on, to actually physically stop. Not just mentally stop thinking, but like actually stop. Um, Many times, I've been in lots of Bible study groups, I've been in lots of men groups, lots of stuff all over for a long long time, and there's always this, this question that says, how's your time with God? 
And I have been guilty of responding like this, and I've heard lots of other people respond like this. We're saying, oh, it's so good. I spend all day with God. He's just with me, and his Spirit's with me everywhere I go. And the reality is that's true. The Holy Spirit is with us all the time. God is with us, and he lives among us. But I realize that this answer is not really good enough when it's talking about time spent with God because it doesn't require us to stop. When we just say, oh, he's with us all day, it doesn't require us to actually be intentional. Like, if I was hanging out with my wife all day long, and we're just with each other, but, like, I'm not stopping, and I'm not really talking to her. Like, she's with me, and she's, but she would want some of my attention. That I can't just not talk to her all day long or stop and acknowledge her. Yes, she can be with me, but I'm not cultivating that relationship. And so it's the same when we're having this daily office time spent with God that it actually requires us to stop. To stop and acknowledge that we're dedicating this time to Jesus, to our time with the Father, to our time with God. We're stopping to do this. Not just leaving in the morning and getting a quick prayer at night before we go to bed, but in the middle of the day, when times are getting stressful, because if you think about it, if I just have my morning quiet time, by, by 12 o'clock, someone's already pissed me off, right? By 12 o'clock, someone is already stressing me out. By 12 o'clock, I'm already forgetting my quiet time. I'm already getting stressed. And if I don't have time to stop there, then I, I go home and I got to do this and I got to do that. And life hits. And by the time that nighttime hits, I say my prayer at the end of the night. But like, did I love people for the last 10 hours? So... So the idea of stopping in the midst of your day is important. And the next part about once you can stop, once you can get that, that idea of just stopping everything, the next part is to center. And what I mean by center is to center yourself around the presence of God. That in this moment, in Psalms 37, 7, it says this, Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And so f- the first step is hard, and that's stopping The next is taking a deep breath, refocusing on Jesus, refocusing uh, our priorities, and, and, and focusing on the presence of God, focusing on who Jesus is, just taking away, pushing away, making sure our phones aren't there, making sure distractions are gone, and to just sit there and center. And this one goes perfectly with the next part, and and this one's hard. It's really hard, and that's silence. So if we can stop, and then we can center around his presence, the next part is to just be silent, to have silence. And I know that this is actually really hard in our life. Um, Henry Nowen said said this, It is almost impossible to live a spiritual life without having silence and solitude in your life. That if we're looking to, to have healthy spiritual lives, we have to embrace the idea of silence and solitude. That in this moment, we don't need to be thinking anything, we don't need to be asking anything, but it's just be silent with the Lord. And this is, what, this is the part that I found in my own walk is when those things that God promises start to enter my life. The peace that transcends understanding. That's when the peace can come. The strength when you're weak. The, the, the energy when you're tired. This moment of silence with the Lord, is really when that starts to happen. And we so badly need this in our lives. We so badly need this moment of perspective shift, this moment of reconnecting with God in our days, especially right now, in the midst of unknowns, in the midst of craziness, in the midst of of busyness and not busyness and distractions and not knowing what tomorrow is going to bring with the news and all of this stuff. We need these moments. We need to stop. We need to center ourselves around the presence of God who promises to be with us. And we need to be silent, silent with him. That this truly will transform us and give us what we need each day. And then the last thing that's so important, so important in the midst of this, in this idea of a daily office, is Scripture. Scripture. The Bible is the living, breathing word of God. It is amazing. And I think so often we view this as only a physical thing for our, maybe that we're reading, we're, we're checking off our Bible time. But something, there's something so powerful about reading the Bible that it's spiritual. 
It's a spiritual thing. And our, our lead pastor, Jeff, shares this analogy. I love it, so I'm going to steal it from him. Uh, but it's talking about when we need food in our real life for energy. To live, we need to eat food. And if we had it our ways, we would always have the best food, right? We'd have the best out to eat or the best steak, the best everything that's so good, and we want to eat it, and it's amazing. But the reality is we don't always get that. Sometimes we're just hungry and we need to eat. Sometimes we just need to eat to survive to, to, because we're hungry and we need the energy, so we eat. It's not always an amazing meal. But we need it. The inside, our insides need it. We need it to go on. And that's the same with reading scripture. It's the same with uh, getting into the word of God that it's not always going to be this amazing time with, with the Bible. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it'll come alive and you'll be so like, this is amazing. But then sometimes you're going to be like, I did not get anything from that. But the reality is, it's a spiritual act when we read the Bible. It does something. It feeds our spirits. And that is very important to us, to feed our spirits with Scripture. And so we have the four things we have. First, we need to stop. We need to stop. And we need to center ourselves around the presence of God. To be silent and listen. What is God doing? We won't know if we can't listen. And lastly, we have to get scripture. And it doesn't, like I said, this could be a two-minute thing in the middle of the day where you're like, okay, I'm going to shut myself in my office for two minutes. I'm just going to be silent, and I'm going to listen, and I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to stop what I'm doing. And at the end of it, I'm going to read my favorite verse over me because there's truth in that. It can be as simple as that, and it will train. Us as staff has been, have been doing this and seeing the amazing stories, God's stories, of how we can just recenter in the middle of our day. R.A. Torrey says this, We are too busy to pray, and so we are too busy to have power. We have a great deal of activity, but we accomplish little. Many services, but few conversations. Much machinery, but few results. That our private life with God, our daily office, multiple times a day with God, that's going to affect the rest of our lives, the rest of our waking lives. And I'm not trying to steal all of Pastor Jeff's analogies, but I have one more. Um, So cars, we all drive cars. And the materials of cars nowadays are actually made uh, like with good material. So you can have an older car, and if you've taken care of the outside, um, it can look pretty good. You can have an older car that looks pretty good on the outside. But the reality is, if you don't take care of the inside of the car, you're not getting normal oil changes, you're not taking care of the brakes, you're not taking care of everything else, you can have a good-looking car on the outside that runs like crap. And that's the same for our lives. If we are living off someone else's spirituality, if we're living week to week off someone else's faith, through either a podcast or a church service or just reading a book, what happens is we might look really good on the outside, but we have crap on the inside. That when we can put into practice this idea of daily office in our life, multiple times a day, stopping, centering, being silent, focusing on Scripture, that starts to work on the inside. And so then maybe... We have a good looking outside, but yes, we are serving. We are getting connected in church. We are filling us, our, us up daily with these things that are good from other people, but we also are cemented in our own faith. We're cemented in it's good for our spirit, our hearts, our minds. So this all sounds great because it is. <laughs> it's good stuff. That spending time with Jesus is amazing. But as I was putting this message together, I still wondered. Would we, especially myself, would I take this seriously? I've heard this message so many times. You know, I've went through courses with our church about this very thing. But why does it sometimes not stick? That I know that it's important for me to spend this daily office time with God, but why does it not stick sometimes? And I was thinking about this, and I felt like I had a personal conviction from God 
And I just want to share with you guys my, my own conviction, my own thing that I'm working on that I, want, that I really need to press into. And that's oftentimes we can understand in our head that this stuff is good, but what happens if we have a lack of the understanding of the goodness of God? I'm going to say that again. The lack of the understanding of the goodness of God. And what I mean by this is, I think oftentimes our perspective of the goodness of God is what's happening in our physical. Right? So, so we're singing this song about the goodness of God, but why is this virus taking over the world? And why is this person sick? And Lord, I had a plan for my life and it's not happening. I, Lord, I've been pressing. I, I, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what my next step is. And when we don't see in the physical what we think the goodness of God is, we start to question if it's even worth it to take that quiet time. Like, yes, I, I, should I take all, I, I'm so busy, i got to make these things happen, and I'm not seeing God move in the way I think he should, so should I really spend time with him multiple times a day? Is it worth it? Does it work? I'm not seeing results in my life, so I don't have time to do this. Because I think oftentimes we have a view of the goodness of God, of what's physically happening around us in our world. And God does move in that way, but we're not promised that as Christians. What I think the goodness of God is, is this. It's who God is. The goodness of God is who our Lord Jesus is. And what Jesus has done for us and promises to us. The goodness of God is that he loves us, loves us even though we're messed up. That he forgives us even though we don't deserve forgiveness. That he will give us peace in the midst of everything going on right now. When we're full of fear and we're full of anxiety and we're full of uh, just not knowing. Jesus gives us peace that transcends understanding. He gives us strength when we are weak. He gives us rest when we are tired. The goodness of God is the sweet, sweet goodness of who Jesus is. It's not what's going on in the world, but it's what's going on in us. Paul in the Bible, he writes much of the New Testament. He's this man who's, who's all after God, has had a crazy past. God forgives him, and he has these ups and downs in ministry. And so this is this man who loves Jesus. Philippians 4, 11 through 13 says this, I'm not saying this because I am need, in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Paul got it. He was content because I believe he understood the goodness of Jesus and who Jesus is. And the crazy thing is, what Paul had, we can have. And if you guys remember one thing from this message, this next part is what I want you to, under, to remember. That the goodness of God is found in the daily office. The goodness of God is found in intentional time spent with God daily. That what we truly desire most in our lives, what we can truly get, what we really need, is through the discipline of daily office, of the daily office, of intentional time spent with Jesus. That truly the goodness of God, that more than we can like ever understand the goodness of what he can do in us that happens through daily time spent with him. And so if we can change our perspective and not what's happening in the physical, but what can Jesus do in us right now, right here, by making time for him. For making time for him, not just in the morning when you wake up, but in the middle of the day. And so this is my challenge to you. Make a plan for your life when it comes to daily office, when it comes to the, the deep, rich tradition of our church of having time spent with, with God a day. Make a plan. It's not going to happen. I know so often we can come away from a message and say that was really good, but if we don't make a plan for our lives, it's not going to be implemented. You know, again, Psalm 27, 4, one thing I ask from the Lord that this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. 
that a man after God's own heart who was extremely busy, who had everything he could ever want, understood if he could have one thing, it was to spend time with God. And I'm not going to go into, into great depth with this, but the fact of the matter is we do have this virus that's disrupting our lives. And there's a lot of things that maybe would normally be busyness in our life is now just not there. Schools don't have school right now. Colleges don't have school right now. Their sports programs aren't on TV. So many of the things that we would normally have as busyness in our life, it's already cut for us. It's already cut for us. So what if, as Christians, we took this as a great opportunity to, to we're already out of, schedule. We're already out of routine. Let's create a new routine of daily office time spent with God, of of intentional time spent with Jesus. And and I was even thinking about families. I think this is such an amazing moment for families because they're just stuck together, right, at home. Ten years from now, a kid's not going to remember much of this moment, but they will remember how they felt as their parents led them And this is a great opportunity for parents to lead their students, to lead their kids to Jesus in the midst of all this, to create daily office, to say, hey, we're going to have a daily office time spent with our family every day in the middle of the busyness. All right, I know everything's crazy, guys. Let's, Let's come together and let's pray. This is an amazing time to create new routines in our life. And what the enemy may of meant for evil, God can turn for good. I really, truly believe that with all of my heart when it comes to this idea of finding God in the midst of this, all this craziness. And and us at TVC and staff, we're all in on this. We're all in on connecting with God and helping you guys connect with God uh, in whatever way it is in in the midst of us not meeting on on the weekend. And so we also have a number that you guys can text. Um, It's 77948. And if you text TVC Hope, We will connect with you. If you want prayer requests, if you want help with daily office, if you need help at all with anything, like this is the number to text, and we will connect with you. Because we truly are all in to to have a God connection during this time. So please text that number if you you need any kind of prayer, anything like that. And I'm going to invite our lead pastor, Jeff, up here in just a moment. But I just want to leave you guys with this. The goodness of God is found in the daily office. The goodness of God is found in intentional time spent with God. Thank you. Matt, that was really good. Really good. Thank you. You know, I was just saying to my wife Anne um, today, I want to be a non-anxious presence around people. And that's not like a default mode for me. But I think what the church can bring in this time, in this struggle that we're going through, is a spirit that is connected to God. And that comes through that relationship, that time connecting with God. So I hope that you'll text that number that you see at the bottom of the screen. We'd love to help you in any way we can. Last thing. You probably noticed that we haven't received an offering in this church service or this virtual church service. And there's a reason for that. When the chairs are all empty, uh, the offering's really small, okay, when you try to pass baskets. So here's the deal. The bills still are there. And I know some of you are struggling at this time because maybe you've lost hours at work or you're afraid of what may happen. But for those of you who are able to, I want to remind you that Church goes on, and your giving does make a difference. And I want to invite you to give or to continue to give to the ministry of this church. Now, if you're at our website, you can click on the Give link. If you're watching Facebook Live, you'll see somebody's posted in the comments. You'll see it right there, a link where you can go to the Give page. And thank you for being faithful and for giving. And so now I'm going to close our time together with a blessing. May you experience the grace and the love of God. May his face shine upon you. May you feel the depth of his love. And may your days, even in dark places, be lit with the bright 
light of an awareness of Christ's love. In Jesus' name, wherever we're at, let's say together, amen, amen, thank you.